One of the e-tutorials that I'm most excited about is counseling survivors, survivors of disasters and community trauma. I used to call this tutorial counseling victims of disasters and I hadn't even added community trauma initially. I changed the word to survivors because a colleague of mine uh, changed the word in something he was doing because he wanted to think about it in a positive way. Those who are still living in truth have survived. How well they've survived possibly depends on how much help they're given initially after the event. And so the course that I'm offering is really about what to do immediately following an event like this, such as a hurricane, um, a tornado, natural disasters, with, those would be examples of natural disasters. Technological disasters would be the disaster you may remember that happened recently in Texas where there was a, uh, a fire due to some type of problem in a, in a chemical plant. That's a technological disaster. Uh, we have community trauma, which could be something like a school shooting in which children have to rush out of the building and some don't make it, as we know, and others thankfully survive. But how do we help the survivors or the survivors of the children that didn't make it? Uh, and then we have community trauma, which might be linked in some way to terrorism. Uh, and uh, so those are the things that I mean when I'm talking about disasters. And most of the time, the initial response is going to be given by either people from the Red Cross, Salvation Army, clergy, or volunteers in the community, both mental health and others, who have the time and the ability to respond. How is this kind of counseling different from something, say, a therapist might see in their office, or a pastor of a church or a clergy person might see on a long-term basis. This is something that happens on the spot. It usually happens at the site of the disaster, uh, and the type of help, help might actually be something practical, like where are you going to get your food for tomorrow? You know, how do you help someone stay warm when they don't have a house anymore and it's cold out? Uh, and it's sometimes even been called psychological first aid. And so the people on the front lines are the people who are there for the first two or three weeks. And there's also a phase afterwards. This is called the honeymoon phase and the heroic phase. Everyone's there. There's so much help. We're all excited to be of help. And then there's the disillusionment phase when everyone's left to go back to their other jobs, like Hurricane Sandy, for example. Everyone was there, and then everyone went off, the volunteers, to do their other things. What can we expect to see the survivors going through at that time? And sometimes it's disillusionment. Hey, aid isn't coming from FEMA. Aid isn't coming from insurance. They still don't have a house to live. Believe it or not, a few months ago, there were still about 300 victims of Hurricane Sandy who weren't back in their homes. Uh, and there are many that will never go back in their homes. So we have after the event situation. And I do talk about that somewhat in the course. But the main focus of a six-week e-course is on what you can do, what are some of the issues immediately after one of these events. How can people from various disciplines work together? You've got a clergy person and a psychologist. You've got an anthropologist, perhaps. You have um, someone from the Red Cross. How do we work together as a team? I think this is so current, and I do hope that if you have any interest, you will all eventually, in some way or other, be affected by this type of event. And um, I hope you would find this course useful.